Welcome back to On This Day. Today's date is April 5th, 2023. And on this day in 1992, Sarajevo was thrust back into the national spotlight. But here in 2023, it is the 95th day of the year. You got 270 days left. It is the 17th day of spring, 77 days until summer. Today is National Deep Dish Pizza Day. National Deep Dish Pizza Day celebrates the Chicago-style deep dish pie, as they call it. Deep dish pizza differs from regular pizza in the way that it is baked. Using high-edge pans, the crust thickens and deepens. This allows multiple toppings to be used, including meat, vegetables, and cheese. Finally, the deep dish pie is topped with tomato sauce and left to bake. What's strange about that, most other pizzas, they put the sauce on on top of the dough, and then they put the cheese and the other toppings. In Chicago style pizza, all that stuff goes on first and then they put the tomato sauce. I love Chicago style pizza. If you ever get a chance, you're in there, go to Giordano's or Lou's. Outstanding pizza. If Giordano's sent me pizza, I would promo their shop. That's like the only non real estate travel company that I would do a sponsored video for on my other channel. All right, let's see what else April 5th has given us. 1614 in Virginia, Native American princess Pocahontas marries English tobacco planter John John Rolfe. Pocahontas was a member of the Powhatan tribe who famously saved the life of English colonist John Smith. Her marriage to Rolfe was seen as an important step towards peace between the English settlers and the Powhatan people. One thing leads to another, Disney makes a movie about Pocahontas in 1995 and markets it to no end. My kids were very young when all this came out. Actually, I only had one at the time, but their channel, Disney Channel, was ridiculous. Whatever movie they had coming out, they would just kill you with ads for it. So they, let's say, show some sh whatever kids show they had on Disney. My son would be watching it in the morning. They'd show five minutes of the show, five minutes of a promo for the movie, five more minutes of the show, five minutes of the promo. Promo, it was ridiculous and it was repetitive, almost like subliminally messaging your kids. I am not the kind of dad that censors things or anything like that. I want kids to explore their own world. I had to turn that one off. 1792, President George Washington exercises his veto power for the first time, rejecting a congressional bill for apportioning representatives among the states. The U.S. Constitution grants the president the power to veto bills passed by Congress, and Washington became the first president to use this power in 1792. 1992. 1951, Julius and Ethel Rosenberg are sentenced to death for espionage. The Rosenbergs were a married couple who were accused of passing atomic secrets to the Soviet Union during the early years of the Cold War. Their trial and subsequent execution remain controversial to this day. 1992, the siege of Sarajevo begins. The Siege of Sarajevo was a brutal conflict that took place during the Bosnian War, in which Serbian forces besieged the city of Sarajevo for three years. The conflict resulted in the deaths of over 10,000 people and is considered one of the defining moments in the breakup of Yugoslavia. Yes, remember when Yugoslavia was actually a country? The conflict began in April of 1992 when Bosnian Serb forces besieged Sarajevo, which was the capital of Bosnia and Herzegovina at the time. After the death of longtime leader Josef Broz, also known as Tito, in 1980, ethnic tensions began to rise in the country. Now, Tito was an amazing man for a lot of different ways. A lot of bad, but they tried to kill him. Stalin tried to assassinate him. Several people tried to assassinate him, and he just wouldn't die. Well, he finally died in 1980. By the late 1980s, several republics had declared independence, and in 1991, Croatia and Slovenia declared independence from Yugoslavia. This sparked a series of wars that would ultimately lead to the breakup of Yugoslavia and the formation of several new countries. In case you don't know, Yugoslavia was its own country, but it was part of the USSR. When the USSR fell apart, they tried to keep it together for a while and it didn't last long. If you're looking for it on a map, look at the area where Bosnia Herzegovina is, Croatia, Slovenia. It also had Serbia, Montenegro, and Macedonia. That's how big the Soviet Union was. They had all those countries, well, when they were Yugoslavia at the time, but in between where Yugoslavia was, there's still a bunch of countries before you actually get to where the current border of Russia is. Bordering Yugoslavia, you had Hungary and Romania, and then there was Moldova, Ukraine, Poland, Belarus and then you finally get to Russia. Well, all this infighting kind of sprung up because of the collapse of the Soviet Union. Being under the Soviet Union flag might not have been the best thing, but it did stop a lot of infighting. 
The Bosnian War was fought between forces of the Bosnian government, which was made up of Bosniaks and Croats, and then the Bosnian Serb forces, which were supported by Serbia. The war was characterized by its extreme brutality on all sides, including widespread ethnic cleansing and use of concentration camps. However, the siege of Sarajevo was perhaps the most intense and devastating aspect of the entire conflict. During the siege, the Bosnian Serb forces encircled Sarajevo and cut off all supplies and routes to the city. This meant the residents were unable to access food, water, medical supplies, and were subjected to constant shelling and sniper fire. The siege quickly became a humanitarian crisis as the residents were forced to resort to desperate measures to survive, including scavenging for food and firewood, using makeshift shelters to protect themselves from constant barrages and shelling and sniper fire. The siege of Sarajevo was also marked by a number of high-profile atrocities, including the massacre at a market in 1994, in which over 60 people were killed and over 100 people injured by a single artillery attack. The attack sparked widespread outrage and led to calls for international intervention to end the siege. Despite all the calls, the international community was slow to respond to the crisis in Bosnia. It was not until 1995 when NATO launched a bombing campaign against the Bosnian Serb targets. That's when the siege of Sarajevo was finally lifted. The conflict officially ended later that year with the signing of the Dayton Accord, which established a framework for the new Bosnian state. The legacy of the siege continues to be felt in Bosnia and Herzegovina and the wider Balkan region. This siege still has a lasting effect on this part of the world. There's still tensions, just they're not having a war anymore. The siege of Sarajevo was a devastating chapter in the history of the Balkan region. It resulted in the death of thousands of people, many of whom were innocent civilians and marked a low point in the international community's response to humanitarian crisis. However, it kind of shows a need for NATO. 2010, an explosion on Deepwater Horizon oil rig in the Gulf of Mexico leads to the largest offshore oil spill in U.S. history. If you haven't seen that movie, they did a pretty good movie on it. You know, it's a movie. It's not going to be exactly how it happened, but it kind of gives you an idea what happened. You should definitely watch that. It came out in 2016. It's called Deepwater Horizon. It starred Mark Wahlberg, Kurt Russell, Kate Hudson, John Malkovich. It was directed by one of my favorite directors, Peter Berg. He used to be an actor himself, then he turned into a director, but he's done all kinds of great movies. He did the movie Friday Night Lights and some of the TV show Lone Survivor. Patriot Day. Speaking of movies, movies released on April 5th, 1974, The Sugarland Express. This was a crime drama, I guess you could say, that was co-written and directed by Steven Spielberg. This is the early days of Steven Spielberg. This was his actual first movie. The, not a TV show. In the film, a woman, Goldie Hawn, tries to reunite her family by helping her husband escape from prison and then kidnapping their son. Well, they also kidnap a cop along the way to help them do that, and this turns into a slow-moving police chase where they're going to Sugar Land, which is in Texas, to get their son. And there's just this line of about 100 cop cars following in their cop car. And most of the movie, I'd say about 75%, take place inside the cop car as they're traveling to Sugarland. Interesting movie. Born on April 5th, Peter Case. He's an American singer, songwriter, and guitarist. His career is wide-ranging, from rock and roll to blues, folk rock, and solo acoustic performances. I've met him before. He was in a band in the 80s called The Plimsolls. When I saw him, they really weren't that big, so they were kind of hanging out after a show. And I got to talk to him and their bass player, who, oddly enough, years later, I was in a very low-budget karate movie called The Brazilian Brawl. If you ever get a chance, check it out. I don't know where you'd find it. Took me two years to find a DVD of it, but that's how low-budget it was. But their bass player was the special effects guy in that movie. Talked to him for about an hour. Died on April 5th, 1994, Kurt Cobain, American singer, songwriter, and guitarist. He was the lead singer Nirvana. He was married to Courtney Love. She's an actress and was in a band called Hole. But he was like the poster child for the whole grunge thing. He was like the man there, the most popular band in the early 90s, late 80s. And he was suffering from depression and all kinds of things. And I guess he hated the fame. I've seen a couple things where he just liked the old days where he used to play bars and hang out with the people that like the music and he liked the scene. He didn't like the popularity. He had some depression issues as it was. Finally, on April 5th, 1994, he took his own life. Interesting enough, there's a ton of conspiracies about this. I don't like to get into conspiracies. They kind of bother me because sometimes they're really stupid. But yeah, he took his own life on April 5th. 
All right, that's today's video. Don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. If you haven't hit that bell notification, make sure you do. That lets you know whenever we upload. All right, guys, everybody have a great day. Be nice to each other.